All right, good Sunday afternoon, everybody. I'm David Paul, KHOU 11 Chief Meteorologist. We are live up here in the KHOU 11 Weather Center. It, uh, it's becoming very likely that what is now Tropical Storm Nicholas in the southern Gulf of Mexico is going to be a major player in Houston Galveston weather over the next three, four days. The storm uh, has become a tropical storm as of this morning. It went from just a uh, investigation, a 94L, to a tropical storm. Hurricane Hunter was out there this morning, and they, they very quickly found a low-level circulation had formed with tropical storm force sustained winds, so you get the quick upgrade to a tropical storm. Uh, again, Hurricane Hunter's out there, and it's a very large moisture shield. There's just a ton of moisture sitting over the Gulf of Mexico. The storm itself may not become that intense. It may never reach hurricane strength. They think it'll stay a tropical storm at this point. But because it looks like it will be a slow mover as it gets closer to us going into Tuesday, Tuesday night, and Wednesday, it is a growing flood threat. This may end up being a significant flood threat. We may see several inches of rain, maybe 10 inches plus in some places. Hopefully we can get that spread out over a couple of days and not cause too many problems. But that will be the greatest threat, I believe, with this system, as long as the forecast verifies and it stays just a tropical storm. That being said, flash flood watches are already being posted, and they'll go into effect beginning at 7 o'clock tonight. Although we're dry now, we think the potential for rain, especially near the coast, is growing as we head into the evening hours and overnight. And right now we've got that up through Tuesday evening. That will most likely be extended at least through Wednesday. And we'll go over the timing of the rain here as we move along. But flash flood watches posted going into effect beginning tonight. In addition to that, on the immediate coast, uh, Galveston Bay, coastal areas, uh, low lying areas, we may see a minor storm surge, a rise in sea level as the storm approaches us from the south and west as we head into Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, a two to four foot surge potential is there, especially for the west and north side of Galveston Bay. So Clear Lake, Kima, San Leon, and the north side of the bay, you know, up not far from Baytown, Christmas Bay, you may see sea level rise two to four feet there over the next day or two as, as a storm approaching from the southwest will have that counterclockwise rotation and that will tend to push water up into the bay. So Texas City included. It's not a major surge. Again, this is forecast to be just a tropical storm. So we're not talking about a huge surge, but that potential is there. And of course, the uh, the Gulf facing beaches, especially low lying areas on Bolivar Highway 87 up there near High Island. You guys could definitely see that become inundated at times of high tide. That does extend down uh, to the coast of Brazoria County and Matagorda County, Matagorda Bay as well. You will see a two to four foot potential surge as the system approaches as we head toward the beginning and middle part of this week. Here's where the system is now, and this is the advisory from the Hurricane Center as of 1 p.m. So this is their intermediate advisory. No change to the forecast cone with an intermediate advisory. We'll get the, a complete forecast cone update at 4 p.m., and we'll have another update then. Right now, pressure's at 1,008 millibars. No change from the advisory uh, three hours ago. It's moving north-northwest at 15. There's the system. And right now, maximum sustained winds are minimal, minimal tropical storm force at 40 miles an hour. And you can see we've got tropical storm warnings now that are posted from the middle Texas coast down to Brownsville and down into the northern portions of the Mexican coast on the Gulf of Mexico side. And then, of course, tropical storm watches include Matagorda Bay, up into Galveston Bay, and all the way up to High Island. So we've got a watch. I expect that will eventually become a warning as the system gets closer here in about the next 24 hours, we'll probably see that watch for Galveston go to a tropical storm warning, forecast cone from the Hurricane Center. So again, we're looking most likely at a tropical storm. And they peak the winds right before a potential landfall near Matagorda Bay Tuesday morning at 65 miles an hour. Now that strength intensity of the system will have so much to do with the, uh, the exact track that it ends up taking. If it ends up tracking on the eastern side of that cone, it stays over warm water, it does not interfere with land, we could actually end up with a category one hurricane. If it tracks on the west side of that cone, closer to land or over land, anytime it gets over or interacts with land, it gets cut off from its, its fuel source, which is the warm water of the Gulf. So a more westerly track would suggest a weaker system an easterly track would suggest a stronger system. 
Uh, we're going to look at the two computer model runs, but basically the European models on the west side of this, the American models on the east side of this. So what they literally have done with this forecast going is split the difference. And that may end up having impacts as to the speed of the storm and how much rainfall, therefore, it ends up dropping. A stronger storm will actually want to move faster. A slower storm, over one, a weaker storm, will move slower. And so we'll look at those forecasts in just a moment. So Matagorda Bay, Tuesday morning, just southwest of the immediate Houston area, Tuesday night. And then at the moment, the forecast does take it Wednesday morning to the northeast side up toward uh, like Livingston, San Antonio, Polk County, the center of a now weakening tropical depression. But you'll also notice the, the forecast, see how the cone bubbles out right here? Mm. So when you see that type of a bubbling with the cone, it means the storm is forecast to slow down. So we've had a lot of questions online. Is this going to be another Harvey rain event? Well, they're all different. Every storm is so different. Harvey uh, was such a different type of a system. Harvey came in from the southeast, hit down near Corpus as a Cat 4 hurricane, and that took three or four days to finally move through, but that kept us on the wet, on the wet side of Harvey for three or four days, which is what flooded us. This is a much weaker system, but there is a tremendous amount of tropical moisture. So even though it's a weaker system, these are notorious for being flash flooding events. So I'm not going to say it's another Harvey because they're all so different. But Nicholas, I think the biggest threat from Nicholas uh, this week is going to be heavy rain, flash flooding. The good news is we're going into this very dry. The bayous are all down at the bottom of their channel. We've been very dry the past couple of weeks. Uh, river channels are all uh, down pretty low. We're not in drought, but we're in a good starting point for, you know, if you're going to have a heavy rain event, you want to start out dry, and we certainly are starting out very, very dry. But because this is forecast to come in from the southeast, we'll be on the wet side for several days, and then slow down, we could end up with several inches of rain, a foot of rain in some places is not out of the question. So just to let you know, these, uh, these advisories, uh, every three hours we get an intermediate advisory, which is what we just had here at 1 o'clock. Three hours from 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock, we'll get a full update advisory. That'll have an updated forecast cone and a complete update on the storm. We'll have another up update for you at 4 o'clock, maybe just a little bit after 4 o'clock. Here's the way it looks like on infrared enhanced satellite. And here's our tropical storm. Now, this is interesting. As we went into the, the, the last night, what we had here is a very broad circulation down here in the southern Gulf of Mexico. And there was a debate as to where an eventual center would form. If a center formed out here, this would keep it over warm water. It had the potential to become a much stronger system. If the center were to form further to the west, this may have it grazing northern Mexico, south Texas, where the landfall is a tropical storm, and that would weaken the system once it hit land. Now, this has formed on the western side of that blob of convection. So it's not out of the question. This could end up interacting with land here, weakening the entire system before it could become a strong system. But as I'm going to show you in a little bit, that weaker system may tend to be a slower moving system. A stronger system will feel the upper level pull and get pulled north faster. A weaker system may move a little bit slower, and that would work against us as far as a flooding threat, as it would uh, expand the amount of time we were on the wet side of the system. Hurricane Hunter's been in there. Uh, they found that pressure this morning that uh, had them, uh, gave them cause to upgrade this to a tropical storm. Uh, this, uh, the, the flight is currently still in there. That's going to exit, and then they'll send another one out as we head into the evening hours. And that's how they were able to find that, that center of circulation. Visible satellite, you can definitely see we've got a, a, a counterclockwise tumble to this. You can see the winds coming around here. The winds have circled back around and cut off on the, on the southern side of that, so we've got a complete closed low. And you can see how far north that shield of moisture now extends. So that's a good seven, 800 miles to the north. So it's a very broad system. You can see also it's lopsided. And if you were watching us uh, uh, yesterday, Friday, as we diagnosed the system's potential development, at the upper levels, we've got this wind shear cutting across it from the southwest. So, so much of the rain and energy to this is being pushed off to the north and east. The system is lopsided. That wind shear also inhibiting it 
it's possible rapid intensification. It's not going to let it rapidly intensify, but it does keep it as, a, as an extended period rainmaker for us. You can see all of the centers here, you know, we're just on the edge of getting into some rain here, and so it's going to take several days for it to move through. So we've got several days where we'll have a chance for rain and thunderstorms. Here is the current radar. So again, the center of our Tropical Storm Nicholas is here. We've got thunderstorms that have reached the coast near Beaumont and southwest Louisiana. And you can see we've got a pretty good rain shield offshore. So that'll be the leading edge. The beginning of our rain event is not far off. It's sitting out here just oh, 100 miles or so south and east of the Galveston coast. And this is the type of thing that you get the threat with with these tropical systems. Because they rotate, because they circulate, you can get organized rain bands that can stretch for hundreds of miles, and if they slow down and stay over the same place for an hour on end, that's when you get your highest flash flooding potential. This one is rotating, but also you can see it's moving. At the moment, this is not just sitting in one spot over the Gulf, it's lifting through. Now, we've had a very dry air mass over us for the past several days at low humidity, and that's kind of still with us, but just looking outside, I can see the winds have all turned around to the southeast, we're beginning to dislodge that dry air mass, and we're about to move back into a very tropical air mass as the leading edge of the tropical moisture from Nicholas enters the area. As I mentioned, we've got two different uh, models that we lean on heavily, and uh, they have, although they have similar tracks, they, they differ just enough and, and interact with the coastline just enough to where we're gonna get two very different outcomes depending on exactly which one of these verifies is correct. Uh, the GFS, the American model, is in red. It stays over the warmer waters of the Gulf, stays further offshore. That would be a stronger storm solution. The European, in white, is closer to the coast, actually makes landfall. That would be a weaker storm solution as far as the intensity of the winds. But as I've been mentioning, a, a weaker system quite often will be a slower mover, and that would raise our rainfall potential. Either way, each track is more of a rain threat than anything else. Let's take a look at the European model. There's the European track, a closer look. It comes in, does interact with the coastline, then moves to the west of Houston. So that is a wetter and slower outcome for us. And as we look at the rainfall forecast from the European model, you know, it does put in a couple of bullseyes that are concerning. That bullseye would take us to a 20 inch total in the blue 25 plus. If you'll remember with, uh, with Harvey, our multiple day rainfall totals countywide were in the 30 to 35 inches. We had you know, a 40, 45 inch plus uh, rainfall bullseye in portions of uh, Brazoria County. So we're not quite to Harvey-like forecasts at the moment, but definitely enough to raise a concern for flash flooding. One other thing, so this is a high resolution model on what is at the moment a low resolution situation. So just because it's putting a bullseye here over Winnie of 25 inches and a bullseye here near Sugarland, Richmond, Rosenberg of 20 inches, the computer is not good enough to know exactly at this point that that's going to be the heaviest rainfall or that's going to be the heaviest, the spot that gets the heaviest rainfall. It could literally be anywhere here in southeast Texas that gets the heaviest and some places we'll get lucky and we'll get less rain. It's just guidance as to the potential rainfall across our area as we head through this week. So the American model, what is it showing as far as rainfall goes? Notice it's a little bit further east, but still puts a slug of heavy rain, 12 to 14 inches, across eastern Brazoria, the west side of the Galveston Bay area, north side of the bay, eastern Harris County, Chambers County, Liberty County. Actually a fairly similar outcome. A track that ended up being further to the east would put the heaviest rain in southwest Louisiana. Lake Charles, Calcasieu Parish, Cameron Parish would, could see that type of a bullseye end up over here. On a track that grazed right by Galveston, that would put us on the dry side, and that would put southeast Louis, southwest Louisiana uh, on the heaviest rain threat. It's just too early to pinpoint exactly where that heaviest rain is going to go, but this is the possibility. This is a suggestion, so we do need to think about and prepare for the possibility of widespread street flooding, if not bayou flooding and river flooding. It is possible with a setup like this. Uh, here's what our latest future track is looking at. This is 4.30 going in the afternoon. I really think most of the rain just holds off the coast as we head deeper into the afternoon. Maybe a few scattered showers near the coast. 
This is early morning Monday, better rain chance near the coast and just offshore. We hit into Monday afternoon, does put at least one rain band in here, uh, interior southeast Texas. Scattered storms could dub an inch or two of rain on Monday. Here we go into Tuesday morning, and you'll notice, so here's, here's, our, here's our storm making landfall between Corpus Christi and Matagorda Bay Tuesday morning. We go into Tuesday afternoon. This is when I think we begin to see our chance for our heaviest rain, Tuesday afternoon and evening. I think Tuesday night, we may see very heavy rain. This is 2.30 a.m. Wednesday. That type of a setup would put very heavy rain across Houston and Southeast Texas. So Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night, into the wee hours of Wednesday morning looks like the largest rain threat. This is Wednesday, 8.30, still a significant rain threat. We'd have a center sitting right here on this particular model run. And even going into Wednesday evening, perhaps a center is here, putting the heaviest rain to the east side of southeast Texas, Liberty County, Chambers County, going into Wednesday evening. So clearly you can see a long, drawn-out event, but it looks like at the moment Scatter showers Monday, scatter showers Tuesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, Wednesday noon, Wednesday afternoon would be the heaviest rain threat, timing of the heaviest rain. Going into Thursday, things begin to settle down, but you can see how things move very slowly. This, this current model would put a center here, right over uh, Winnie near Beaumont and putting heavy rain Beaumont to Lake Charles, going into Thursday morning. So potential impacts. Here's another way to look at it. And as you look at this, you can see most of the bright colors indicating the higher threat has to do with the heavy rain part of this. So here's another look at the timing on the heavy rain threat. Going to tonight, I don't think we're going to see much in the way of a threat. Monday morning, scatter showers near the coast, maybe one or two heavy downpours. Monday afternoon, a heavier rain band moving inland, that's a little bit of a moderate threat. And it looks like Monday night we may have a burst of heavier rain. Models at the moment kind of want to settle things down a little bit going into Tuesday morning <clears throat> and then fire it back up. Again, I think it's Tuesday night into Wednesday morning where we have the highest chance for heavy rain and the highest flash flooding threat. Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, all the way into Wednesday evening. That at the moment appears to be the best timing for the heavy rain threat. Wind. So that really won't be a threat until the center of whatever this is, a tropical storm, a depression, maybe a, a weak hurricane gets close, close to us. And that won't happen. The center won't get close to us until Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning. So the wind threat doesn't go up until Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. And that wind threat would most likely be on the coast, uh, west side of the bay, Texas City, up to Clear Lake, and the north side of the bay, up toward Baytown, Christmas Bay, and folks near the immediate coast, Galveston Island, Volleyball Peninsula, um, Matagorda Bay, Matagorda County, Coastal Brazoria County, Surfside. That wind threat again going into Tuesday evening, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. That would be as the center went by. This will also be when the highest tides will be occurring. That's when that surge is most likely to be a problem, two to four feet. And so overall, our flooding threat stays light to rather moderate through Tuesday, especially because we're starting out so dry. So even if we get some bursts of heavy rain Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it's falling on very dry ground, bayous are way at the bottom of the channel. We can handle several inches right now. It wouldn't be, be until we had some saturation and then the heaviest rain moving in associated with a close hit by the center going into Tuesday night Wednesday morning through Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening. So it really looks like a Tuesday night, Wednesday, Wednesday evening time frame for our greatest weather threats from Tropical Storm Nicholas. The two models. Euro and red, GFS American and yellow. And you notice how there's a lot more of these isobars associated with the GFS. So the GFS is a little more aggressive with the intensity, the strength of the wind field, uh, a lower pressure center than the European. Isobars are not as tight, there's a little more space in between them. So the European has a weaker system, GFS has a stronger system. GFS keeps it a little further offshore 
excuse me, yeah, GFS further offshore, the Euro closer to the coastline, you get it interfering with land and that takes away some of its energy source. That's why it has a weaker, a weaker outcome, weaker storm with the European model. And you'll notice the result, a stronger storm moves quicker than a weaker storm. So, you know, if you want to reduce the flooding threat, we're almost rooting for this to stay offshore and become maybe a category one hurricane. Now, wind-wise, that's something we could certainly handle. We would have some power outages. We would have some tree limbs come down. Most impacts would be near the coast, west side of the bay, immediate coastline. But it would get through here quicker and lower the flood threat for a wide portion of our community. Whereas the slower, weaker uh, European model is a wetter solution. It's further west, keeps us on the wet side of this thing. And that keeps us even going into September the 15th here. Uh, on the wet side of that system while the GFS has the center back into Louisiana. At that point, we'd be on the dry side. So it will be something we'll watch very carefully. It will be the intensity of the storm may determine how quickly the storm moves and therefore how high of a flood risk we end up having. Spaghetti plots, uh, very tightly clustered. You know, we've, we, we've got this. We know where this is most likely going. But because the coastline is right there, just a little bit, of a westerly track versus or, or an easterly track will have a huge impact on the intensity and therefore the exact uh, outcome and impacts across our community. Sea surface temperatures, and we talked about this on Friday in particular, this was the one thing the storm really had going for it, very, very warm water. So it's got a lot of energy to work with, but it is being sheared. There's a lot of upper level wind shear cutting across that same section of ocean Wind shear wants to disrupt a circulation as it forms, so that's the reason it's not forecast to explode into a powerful hurricane because there's just too much wind shear. Were that wind shear not there, we would be looking at, I think, a forecast for a much stronger hurricane. So here it is uh, as we stand right now. Tropical Storm Nicholas has formed in the southern Gulf. At the moment, rainfall, we're going to go inland 4 to 8 inch potential. On the coast, 8 to 12. There may be spots that get more but exactly where the heaviest rain totals are going to come down, it's too early to pinpoint. Uh, winds are most likely going to be the greatest impact right near the coast and the bay. The highest risk out of all of this is flooding. Tornadoes, you know, with this type of a strength of system, I think they're just a very slight risk. But anytime you get a land-falling tropical system, there's so much twist or vorticity to the atmosphere that you could end up seeing a couple of isolated tornadoes, but that again is on the low end of the risk. By far, it is a high risk for flooding due to the slow moving long duration of this event. That's where we stand with Tropical Storm Nicholas right now. Uh, the next advisory, a complete a full advisory comes out at 4 p.m. and uh, we'll be with you live here at 4 p.m. Uh, right around 4 p.m. within the live update. We should have an updated forecast cone as well at 4 o'clock. We will see you then.